the last person to see Alicia Bartlett alive? Except for the murderer, of course, Detective Lieutenant Braxton added quickly. Jason felt himself recoil, as if someone had punched him in the stomach. Like the time when he collided with Rod Pearson in a game of touch football and had the breath knocked out of him, he had gasped for air, just as he did now, relieved as air rushed into his lungs. Not like that other time, lying on the ground, waiting to suffocate and die. The detective fastened his black eyes upon Jason. His face was thin, as if his flesh had been pulled taut from the back of his head. His eyes were bloodshot. He had refused a cup of tea that Jason's mother had offered with an abrupt, Sorry, Mrs. Durant, time is really a factor, and I have some important questions for Jason. Turning to Jason, leaning forward, he said, I want you to be real careful, Jason, and tell me everything you remember about that last visit with Alicia. Later, Jason realized that he hadn't told the detective exactly what had happened that afternoon Alicia had died. Not that he had lied. He had told the truth. Under the detective's double-barreled gaze and his rapid-fire questioning, Jason had answered as best as he could. But he had never been questioned by a detective before and had never had a friend murdered before. The detective also seemed so impatient as he answered his questions that Jason was relieved when he was able to give quick answers. For instance, when the detective had asked if everything had been normal at Alicia's house that afternoon, Jason had answered unhesitatingly, yes, because everything had been normal. Alicia had been fussing and fuming about a jigsaw puzzle as usual, even though she was a whiz at placing the pieces in the right spot. Her brother Brad had been a pain in the butt, but also, as usual, jumping around the swimming pool, pushing and shoving his buddies Greg Shavin and Marv Galehouse, a lot of yelling and screaming. Once in a while, Brad leaped out of the pool, shaking water off his body like a big dog, almost dousing the puzzle, trying to get a rise out of Alicia. Nothing new about that. Brad tried to get a rise out of everybody although he had spared Jason that particular afternoon. Frankly, Brad was obnoxious, never sat still. He'd give little pushes to your chest with a flat of his hand as he talked to you, even when he was being friendly. And that was why Jason, and that was why Jason told the detective that everything was normal that afternoon. The detective then asked a follow-up question that sounded to Jason like the same question asked in a different way. Did Alicia seem upset about anything? Jason thought a moment. Well, she was having trouble with the jigsaw puzzle. It was a hard one with like a thousand pieces, a red, big red bird, a cardinal. He told the detective that Alicia had set up a card table on the patio not far from the pool. That was why she had to keep yelling at Brad to stop splashing water all over the place. She'd already filled the edges of the puzzle, which was the easy part. All the other pieces looked alike to Jason. The detective looked up from his notebook and shook his head. And Jason could tell he was getting impatient with these details. She finally got mad at the puzzle and knocked the pieces off the table and sent them all over the patio, Jason said. Did she seem upset about anything other than the puzzle? Well, Brad kept teasing her, but he was always teasing her and everybody else, too. The detective said nothing. He sat there looking at Jason until Jason began to squirm a bit. He wished he could come up with some big clue to satisfy the detective, but there was no big clue that Jason knew of. What time did you leave Alicia? The detective asked. Jason hesitated. He hadn't been wearing his watch. He never wore a watch during summer vacation because time didn't seem important. I'm not sure. A few minutes after Brad and his buddies left, I helped Alicia pick up the pieces of the puzzle and we took them and the card table into the house. 
she offered me a glass of lemonade, but I could see she was still not in a very good mood and I came home. Did you check the time when you arrived home? Yes, Jason said, pleased to be able to come up with a piece of definite information. I remember the clock in the front hall striking four as I came in. How long did it take you to arrive home from Alicia's house? Jason shrugged. Four or five minutes? She lives right down the street. Lived, not lives, Jason corrected himself. And the fact of Alicia's death struck him again, but he was determined to hold himself in check, made himself sit stiffly erect. You see anything suspicious on the street as you walked home? Actually, I didn't walk on the street. I went through the backyards, proud of himself for being in control, and I didn't see anybody. Alicia was alone in the house when you left? Right. She had headed for the kitchen for lemonade when I said, see you later, and came home. You said you arrived home at four o'clock. Was anybody else home? No, my mother and sister came home about, he turned to his mother for help. Emma and I arrived almost at the same time, his mother said. Oh, maybe about five or so. She hesitated, frowning. Why are all these questions so important, detective? Everything's important, Mrs. Durant, and especially Jason's information. We haven't found anyone else who saw her after Jason left her at her house. By tracking Jason's movements and making some kind of timetable, we can trace Alicia's movements. For instance, now we know that Alicia was alone in her house at about four o'clock when Jason left. They all sat in silence for a while. Jason glanced at Emma, saw her big, her eyes bright with interest. She had started writing a detective story a while back, and this would provide her with first-hand material. Anything else you can tell us, Jason? The detective asked. Jason shook his head. The detective closed his notebook with a snap. All his movements were quick, without wasted effort. If you think of anything, let us know, he said, rising to his feet. After he'd left, Jason's mother told him he had done just fine answering the, detect the detective's questions. I know what a strain this must be, she said, touching his cheek. Heading for his room, Jason wondered whether he had really done just fine, like his mother had said. He flung himself on the bed, trying to sort out his thoughts, trying to recapture exactly what had happened that afternoon. What hadn't he told the detective, and was any of it important after all? What he hadn't told, that he wondered whether Alicia was upset more more than the puzz about more than the puzzle that afternoon and whether Brad was involved somehow. So remember, Brad is her brother. He remembered how Alicia kept looking at the pool and yelling at Brad to quiet down. How the hell can I concentrate with all that noise? She yelled. Hell sounded foreign on her lips. Hell wasn't exactly a swear word, but it was kind of a shock coming from Alicia, who was a proper dainty little girl. What's the matter, Alicia? Jason had asked. Are you mad about something? No more than usual, she said, pointing with her chin at Brad and his friends. He gets my dander up. Okay. Jason, Jason shook his head in admiration and affection. Dander? A grandmother kind of word. That was why he got such a kick out of Alicia. She acted like a little old lady sometimes, as if she'd been born in an earlier time when most kids spent hours on the internet. She did jigsaw puzzles. She wore dresses most of the time and was seldom seen in pants or shorts, even on hot days. She scolded Brad as if she were his big sister and not his kid sister. Jason closed his eyes, now remembering how he and Alicia had worked on the puzzle together while trying to ignore the antics going on at the pool. Alicia finally hit her stride and began to place a series of pieces in their proper slots, although she continued to frown and scold. Brad and his buddies finally abandoned the pool and toweled themselves off in the sun. 
Brad wandered over to the patio and stood silhouetted against the sun. What would happen, Alicia, if I accidentally tripped and knocked that card table over? Deliberately stressing the word accidentally, Alicia gave him a withering look. Haven't you done enough damage today already? She said in a voice as cold as an icicle, not a kid sister's voice at all. Brad just stood there, the sun in his back, his face in shadow, so that it was impossible to read his expression. Alicia continued to stare at him as if waiting for a response. Right, she said, spitting the word out. Brad turned away abruptly and joined his friends. The next time Jason looked up, they were gone, leaving a heavy silence in their wake. Alicia muttered something under her breath. What did you say? Jason asked. You wouldn't want to know, she said. And that was when she swept her hand across the table and sent the pieces of the puzzle flying in all directions. She sat there a minute looking at the scattered pieces. Jason thought she was going to cry. But instead she said, I'm tired of doing puzzles. Let's get a cold drink. Mom made some lemonade. Her lips were trembling and her hands were shaking. Jason's own lips were trembling now as he opened his eyes and stared at the smoke alarm on the ceiling. Should he have gone into all those details with the detective? Or were Alicia and Brad just having another one of their squabbles? Brother and sister stuff. Would he have looked stupid if he had told the detective about it and it had turned out to be nothing at all? He had looked stupid too many times in his life. Anyway... Did it all really matter? With Alicia dead, that overwhelming knowledge giving him shivers, what did an argument amount to anyway? Brad was probably sadder than anybody on earth right now, thinking of the lousy way he had treated his sister the day she died. The day she was murdered. Poor Brad, Jason thought. But most of all, poor Alicia. He didn't stop the tears this time, but no tears came. His eyes were dry, and that seemed even worse than crying. I'm going to pause there. So page 40 is where we'll pick up next time.